All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Sooth Planet Overhaul mod, which is being made by forum user Tintin. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a complete replacement of the entire solar system, which, as you can see here, does include a new Kerbin homeworld, complete now with poorly placed runway. I mean, really? A mountain at at the end of the runway not a good idea especially for a poor pilot like me and uh, yeah I think that actually is going to be a new record for the series though as we're not even a minute in and I already have to talk about one of the two issues I have with this mod now don't get me wrong I love this planet pack as it has some seriously cool planets but the Kerbal Space Center man it really should not be in this location. It is on a series of islands on a new southern continent of this new Kerbin. And yeah, besides the runway, we've also got some odd clipping issues of the snow on the launch pad. And over there in the distance is the monument, which still exists, but is now hovering above the water. So, <laughs> yeah, perhaps it should just be moved a little bit back that way in the large open clearing where it's not running into a mountain, perhaps, and maybe has some flatter terrain for the launch pad. But that hopefully will come in a future update. Now, back to what this mod is. Of course, as I said, it is a replacement of the stock solar system, which is kind of an oddity for me. As you guys know, I prefer planet packs that add in new solar systems. And I tend to avoid planet packs that just add in new planets to the existing solar system. So this one's kind of a weird middle ground where it does add new planets, but also changes the existing ones in weird ways that I'm kind of off put about, but also kind of like. And so, yeah, let's just jump right on into the tracking station now and take a look at all the changes. And first and foremost is our new home world, Kerbin, which has oh, a heck of a lot more ocean and is just now, you know, a lot of spread out island continents. We've got a lovely uh, polar ice cap there, also in the south, which is good. And yeah, just a lot of small, much smaller continents continents than before and with a lot of colder areas that's something that'll actually be a theme throughout a lot of these planets because as you can tell there the star for this new system is not quite as bright as our old ones so uh we're a much colder solar system than we used to be and yeah so this is our new Kerbin of course going by the same name which leads me to issue number two that I have with this mod. If we go to take a look at our new moon for Kerbin, it's Lathe. Lathe. A very different Lathe, as you can clearly tell here. It's got oceans and ice continents, and it's a freaking moon. So it's a different planet in a different location, but still using the name Lathe. And I don't... I, I feel very uncomfortable with that. <laughs> It's an odd thing for me. I've been playing this game for years, and so whenever I hear one of these stock planet or moon names, I go, oh, so I should expect this. Now, no, no, I should not expect that. I should expect something entirely different. So just using the same names, but for completely different planets kind of weirds me out. I hope it changes in the future, but I, I kind of doubt it will, considering, well, it's kind of a thing, I guess, since it is just an overhaul of the existing planets. It moved them all around, shuffled them, and gave them new worlds. But Lath is still quite nice here, and if you are going to visit it, it does have a beautiful atmosphere. It's 409 kilometers in size, and uh, like I said, cold Everything's cold. Lots of ice continents there. Now let's move on to the next thing in the list, which is Duna, which, if we spin around to actually be able to see it, reminds me of a Crunchberry. I don't know why. I haven't eaten that cereal, I think, since I was, like, in the single digits age-wise, but it reminds me of a Crunchberry. <laughs> <laughs> it's got that weird pinkish purple texture, all the little ridges everywhere, and it's still Duna, just a completely different Duna. But it does still have a thin atmosphere, and its equatorial radius is 353. Now, it does have a fun 
Ice Moon, which is Ike, which kind of reminds me of cheese. I don't know why all these things are reminding me of food today, but, you know, we're going to roll with it. And yeah, it's just a small little 130 kilometer moon with, of course, no atmosphere and has been hit by a fair few comet in uh, or asteroid impacts there. Very, very fun indeed. Now we move on to the first of the new planets, which we have here is Asford, which again, ice planet. Lots and lots of ice planets in this thing. It, again, it's going to be a common theme. So yeah, we got a lot of uh, icy continents with a lot of open ocean for you to have fun with and explore. Have a nice frozen south pole there. And, well, actually a continent up at the top for most part of it, which is, you know useful and yeah fun place to go visit 361 kilometers in size it too does have an atmosphere which is always handy and has some moons let's get to them we have Rizian, which is a, a ball of ice with lots of cracks in the surface and a couple of uh comet strike why do i keep saying comet strikes no no punt marks from asteroids etc uh and yes yeah a nice little planet it's just Ice full of cracks, 314 kilometers in size with no atmosphere. Uh, the next thing we go to, I believe, let me just uh, zoom out to make sure it is just the one moon. Yes, the next couple of things are actually going to be objects in this solar system's asteroid belt. So we start with Moho. And it is 250 kilometers in size and no atmosphere. And just a nice sort of, you know, tan black yellowish world full of cracks fun place to go visit and uh yeah much much further away from the sun than before with some nice large impact strikes on the back end very cool the next we have is gilly very tiny little 13 kilometer asteroid just floating around with no atmosphere of course it would be amusing though if a 13 kilometer thing did have an atmosphere that would be entertaining. Someone do that. And it has a little tiny moon of Kit, which is only five kilometers in size and would definitely be an interesting one to try and go and do a mission on. Very, very jagged and, well, very, very small. Would make for a fun little mission. And the next thing we have is a Drace, a bit bigger, at 138 kilometers. No atmosphere. I do quite like the texturing on it. Got some nice, fun, big mantles with what look like just giant holes of doom and uh, overall quite cool quite cool indeed and next we have is jewel once now that we've left the asteroid belt and now jewel pretty much looks like jupiter and is 5753 kilometers in size with an atmosphere that you don't want to visit because it's full of death and of course it has just two little moons now with one being the moon and uh yeah the moon seems to have gotten into a fight since last time we've seen it <laughs> instead of just being a gray hunk of rock it now has streaks of red and white and gray and is actually a lot cooler i think than it looked before very very interesting very fun new uh texturing for it 211 kilometers in size very, very nice. The next we have is Eve orbiting Jewel here. And uh, yeah, we got a lot more islands, a lot more ocean, a lot more continents full of ice. Because again, very, very cold solar system. We have a, uh, you know, lovely thing down there. No ice cap up top. Just a very big continent there. And yeah, just a fun little planet. 479 kilometers in size with a present atmosphere always good after that we have a val which <laughs> as you can see is a little bit more complicated over here now val is 300 kilometers in size and is probably the most boring of all of the planets in this mod pack because it's just i mean it's got really no feature on it that looks interesting it's just so smooth i mean it has ridges etc but it's just so smooth and has a couple of moons the first of which being olad which is just a jagged purpley thing with it which is 44 kilometers in size we then have karthus which is 117 kilometers in size and reminds me for some reason of the creep from starcraft gotta love the zerg my friends uh but yeah very cool looking planet i love all the cracks etc going through and other than that though giant ball of ice <laughs> and the next one we have is heath which is just a green 
thing out there in space. 17 kilometers in size and is, well, it'd be an interesting one to come out to. Next is a Trobus, another gas giant, and you guys know me, I am a sucker for a ringed planet, and Trobus is one of several. Uh, my favorite planet in this whole pack is on one of the uh, ringed gas giants, but it'll actually be a little bit longer till we get to it. Now this one is 3,361 kilometers in size, has some pale blue rings, and you know, kind of looks like Jewel, but with a pale blue band there, and does have a couple of moons. We have... Cleas, is that how you say that right? It is a ball of ice, which has been potmarked by craters and is, well, 225 kilometers in size. We then have the next gas giant here, which is Rotheon, which um, has some really cool rings. They're neon almost. It's, it's very, very cool and has pale blue and red stripes going through this gas giant. Very, very fun one. 2,361 kilometers in size and has the moons of Olsten, which is a giant ball of ice which has some weird orangey bit layer underneath it, which is interesting. 385 kilometers in size and with a thin atmosphere. And then we have load another giant friggin' ball of ice with some big craters in it. 225 kilometers in size, no atmosphere. We then go to Elu. We have four objects here. Actually, maybe a few more than four, but that are considered outer objects. They are dwarf planets so far away from the sun in this system that we basically can't see them. I mean, look at this thing. We, we have no light here no light whatsoever, but it is 210 kilometers in size and would make for a very interesting mission to try and come out here and land somehow successfully on a planet with just no light, no light anywhere. Uh, we then have Suthi, which are, is a weird point in space that actually has nothing associated with it. As you can see, it's zero kilometers. I think it has something to do with the physics of how the outer objects work. We have a couple of these, in fact. We have Sooth E, Sooth N, Sooth S, and then finally Sooth W. And again, I think they have something to do with the physics. All of them have nothing you can land on, but apparently they do have an atmosphere. That's awkward. And then we go to Minmus, another one of the outer objects, which as you can see, we can't see. It's 60 kilometers in size, and uh, it should actually be almost identical, I believe, to the uh, normal Minmus, just slightly darker in color. Well, very darker in color, considering we can't see a thing. We then have a Bop, another one of the outer objects with barely any light. We can actually kind of make out a little bit of detail on this one, but not much at all. 65 kilometers in size. We then have Pull, which is 44 kilometers in size. And this one we actually can kind of see a bit of, which is interesting. We are still very, very far away from the sun in this solar system, though. And then we get to the sun, 46,715 kilometers in size, which has a very deadly atmosphere that you don't want to land on. You just don't, don't want to land on it. Let's actually zoom out real quick so you guys can get an idea of those outer objects. So we got to zoom out uh, pretty far here. And there we go. Those are those outer objects. So there's a pole there, bop there, minmus there, and elu there. So our pole is really going to be the hardest one to get to, especially if it's on that far point of its orbit. But yeah, it is seriously far away from the rest of the star system. And I think that's why those Sooth E, N, etc. things exist to make these, as you can see them here, they're, they're on this location. I think they have something to do with the physics of these outer objects, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, but yeah, definitely would make for some fun missions to go to just with how far away those things are. Now back into the solar system and moving to the next planet in line which is Tylo. If we zoom in, it is 600 kilometers in size, a very beautiful looking place. Definitely looks like a planet close to the sun and has seen much better days. We then have Meath, which is a giant ball of water and ice, tidally locked with the sun there. So we do have that dichotomy, very fun. 431 kilometers in size with an atmosphere. 
We then have Econ, which is one of its little tiny asteroid moons, only three kilometers in size. Definitely, I think, I think it is the smallest object in this solar system. Very fun. We then have Trode, 53 kilometers in size, much bigger than the last. And uh, then we have Smeal. Or Smial, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but this is my favorite because it has a giant purple ring and three little asteroids within it, which is fun. Now, uh, Smeal itself is 3,431 kilometers in size and uh, is a fairly kind of boring gas giant. I mean, we got the fun purple bands down there, but overall, it's pretty boring compared to the others. But when we have Fled, which is 18 kilometers in size, and then Tried, six kilometers in size, and Clives, four kilometers in size, you get a very cool planet here where you can get the line of asteroids plus if we were at a better uh, angle here we would see the sun behind it etc and it would be a very very fun place to be I like it I always love when you have planets or asteroids going through rings it's it gets me every time and then we're back to Kerbin and that is all the planets now of course normally I would then go to a satellite somewhere in space for us to get a cool looking view but instead what we're gonna do since we're on a new Kerbin is we're gonna get out a plane and try not to run into the mountain <laughs> for our final bit of the episode today, just to sort of sum things up. So this has been the Sooth Planet Overhaul mod, a very nice little pack of planets. Again, I am kind of weirded out by the whole fact that you have stock named planets just with new textures and models, etc. But you know what? I can live with it considering the cool other things and if only they would fix the location of this this runway eating mountain then i would even love kerbin a lot more but for now we'll just have to fly over it and then feast our eyes upon the mighty fjords of our new land which actually the fjords i guess are more over this way oh i'm going to die aren't i nope no i think we have enough altitude <laughs> excellent perfect oh uh, yeah a, a lovely little icy mountainous cold place of this world with a couple of little fjords over here for you to go and explore. Hard to put a boat into the water if you do enjoy boating because, well, mountain here. Tiny little beach over here with the floating memorial thing. But yeah, some, a lovely little planet, a lovely place indeed, and a good solar system chock full of a lot of very, very cold planets. In uh, And yeah, overall, very fun. Good additions to the game, definitely a fun pack if you are looking for a new experience. So if you would like to check out this mod for yourself, and I would definitely suggest that you go and do so, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. And yeah, I'd definitely say to go check it out if even only for a couple of missions just to, just to experience it. Uh, but yes, that's going to be it for today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do come back for the next episode when we'll be looking at, hopefully, yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, my friends, I thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!